When I left Sebastian in Morocco, I had intended to return directly to Paris, but the business of his allowance meant that I had to travel to London to see Bridie. We met in the library of Marchmain House. Do you consider there is anything vicious about my brother's connection with this German? No. I'm sure not. It's simply a case of two waifs coming together. You say he's a criminal? Criminal type. He's been in a military prison and he was dishonorably discharged. And the doctor says Sebastian is killing himself with drink. Weakening himself. He hasn't DTs or cirrhosis. He's not insane. Certainly not. He's found a companion he happens to like. And a place that he happens to like living in. Then he must have his allowance, as you suggest. The thing's quite clear. Would you like to paint this house? My father wants it done for a record to be kept at Brideshead. One picture of the front, one of the back from the park, one of the staircase, one of the large drawing room, four small oils. I don't know any painters. Julia says you specialize in architecture. Yes. I should like to very much. You know they're pulling it down. My father's selling it. They're going to put up a block of flats here. They're keeping the name. We can't stop them, apparently. What a very sad thing. Well, of course, I'm sorry. But do you think it good architecturally? It's one of the most beautiful houses I know. Can't see it. I've always thought it rather ugly. Perhaps your pictures will make me see it differently. I began in the long drawing room, for they were anxious to ship the furniture which had stood there since it was built. I set out the perspective in pencil, but held back from the painting, like a diver on the water's edge. Once in, I found myself buoyed and exhilarated. I was normally a slow and deliberate painter. That afternoon and all next day and the day after, I worked fast. I could do nothing wrong. At the end of each passage, I paused, tense, afraid to start the next, fearing like a gambler that luck must turn and the pile be lost. But bit by bit, minute by minute, the thing came into being. There were no difficulties. The intricate multiplicity of light and color became a home. Each brushstroke, as soon as it was complete, seemed to have been there always. This was my first commission. I had to work against time, for the contractors were only waiting for the final signature to start their work of destruction. In spite, or perhaps because of that, for it is my vice to spend too long on a canvas, never content to leave well alone, those four paintings of Marchmain House are particular favorites of mine. And it was their success, both with myself and others, that confirmed me in what has since been my career. Must be lovely to be able to do that. It is. 
Oh, I'm tired. I bet you are. Is it finished? Practically. I shall have to go over it again in the morning. Do you know it's almost dinner time? There's no one here to cook anything now. I only came up today. I didn't realize how far the decay had gone. You wouldn't take me out to dinner, would you? All right. Oh, thank you. I'll go and get changed. We let ourselves out by a side door and walked to the Ritz Grill. You've seen Sebastian? Yes, I have. He won't come home, even now. I didn't realize you understood so much. Well, I love him more than anyone. Sad about marches, isn't it? Very sad. Do you know they're going to build a block of flats? And that Rex wants to take what he calls a penthouse at the top? Isn't that like him? Poor Julia. That was too much for her. He couldn't understand it at all. He thought that she'd like to keep up with the old home. Things have all come to an end very quickly, haven't they? Apparently, Papa's been terribly in debt for a long time. And selling marches has put him straight again. But what's going to happen to you? What indeed? There are all kinds of suggestions. Aunt Fanny Roscommon wants me to live with her. And then Rex and Julia talk of taking over half of Brideshead and living there. But won't your father come back? We thought she might. But no. They closed the chapel at Brideshead. Did they? Bridie and the bishop. Mummy's requiem was the last mass said there. After she was buried, the priest came in. I was there alone. I don't think he saw me. He took up the altar stone and put it in his bag. Then he burnt the wads of wool with the holy oil on them and threw the ash outside. He emptied the holy water stoop, blew out the lamp in the sanctuary, and left the tabernacle open and empty, as though from now on it was always to be Good Friday. Suppose none of this makes any sense to you, Charles? Poor agnostic. I stayed there till he was gone. Then suddenly there wasn't any chapel there anymore. Just an oddly decorated room. I can't tell you what it felt like. 